could we finally see the return of Square Enix's best RPG of all time and one of my favorite games of all time with Chrono Trigger, a Super Nintendo classic that's been ported over to many other platforms over the years. But for some reason, mysteriously, it is missing on the Nintendo Switch and a lot of fans out there have been wondering why isn't this game on there? We've seen a renaissance of other indie RPGs kind of come and take its place and do incredibly well, which we're gonna talk about in just a bit. But there is a sliver of hope that Square Enix's Dream Team RPG will make its way to the Nintendo Switch and modern systems soon. In addition to that, we've got some other big information to talk about when it comes to Nintendo Switch RPGs and more. Before we get into all that, guys, what's good, everyone? OJ here. Welcome back to another video. Please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you are someone new, and click that notification bell to get the best Nintendo Switch and RPG news. Now, let's go ahead and jump right back into this when it comes to Square Enix and Chrono Trigger. So, over on Twitter or X, I talked about Square Enix losing a lot of money not having Chrono Trigger on the Nintendo Switch. If you look at the eShop for the past two weeks, there is just a tiny game called Sea of Stars that is dominating the eShop charts as of right now. It is number one. It's been number one for the past couple weeks now on the platform. And we saw games like Chained Echoes and other RPGs come out and just do incredibly well on the Nintendo Switch platform. Now, we do know based off of what the official Sea of Stars account said that the game has sold over 250 thousand copies in its first couple weeks on the market that is remarkable for an indie rpg that was really just slated to come out for the nintendo switch and pc a couple of years ago but they ended up getting deals for game pass they ended up getting deals for the psn plus and here we are now at this point but many of that 250,000 is definitely switch owners going out there and buy it because i don't think it hit any record peaks for steam most people were still playing baldur's gate and starfield those are all breaking the records but over there on the eShop, you see this little indie rpg that is modeled after classics like chrono trigger do incredibly well because that's what people want to play and if your game is going to sell if you've got a japanese rpg obviously the switch is a great place to put it especially if it's an indie style chrono trigger old school jrpg influence and that's exactly what sea of stars is and look at how well it's been doing and i have no idea what square enix is looking at here maybe they're playing the same approach as super mario rpg where they're not putting it out on the service because they want to have a full remake of the game and they're waiting for the right time to bring it back all we saw with Super Mario RPG was it was on the Super Nintendo Classic. I think it was on the WiiWare back in the day, but really it didn't show up many times. It hasn't been re-released a lot, and Square Enix just really held on to it, held on to it, and then finally with Nintendo, got a remake made. So could we be seeing that very soon for Chrono Trigger? Are they waiting for after Super Mario RPG does its thing to reveal that there is something in line here? I mean, if you look at it, Square Enix, they're not stupid. We see Final Fantasy, the Pixel remasters. Those did over 3 million units with a lot of it on the Nintendo Switch. They see Octopath Traveler. They see Live Alive. They see all of these games. They know that all of them sell really well. And Chrono Trigger is a game that still in today's day is better than most of those games. Let's just keep it real. And I'm not even trying to have rose tinted goggles or nostalgia chrono trigger is probably better than like 99 percent of games that come out today it still does incredible things that a lot of rpgs don't do in this day or just flat out is better with its writing script and story in many different aspects so to me I know Square Enix knows that they have to get something done. I'm just wondering when it's going to be and what form is it going to take. They have Radical Dreamers. They have Chrono Cross on the Nintendo Switch and modern platforms. So clearly they know that people want the Chrono franchise. It's just a matter of when and how they're going to get it done. And I think that there could be something soon. Now, obviously, there's Nintendo Direct Rumors that could be happening. But I'm not going to sit here and say, oh my gosh, it's going to be at the next Nintendo Direct or it's going to be revealed before the end of the year i'm not going to say that with tokyo game show or anything like that but i think that maybe next year there could be something and i know i've maybe anticipating that now for the past number of years since the release
release on the PC, but there's a reason why not too long ago they actually updated the PC version to be way better. Four years, I think, after the PC version came out, they actually said, okay, let's go here and fix a number of things with this classic RPG. So it just kind of all slowly coincides with the Chrono Cross announcement, the Radical Dreamers and everything. I think that they're slowly putting together something for us. I mean, they're going at the pace of molasses at this point, but hey, I guess some pace is better than no pace. So what do you guys think? Do you think Chrono Trigger could be coming back this Super Nintendo Classic on the Nintendo Switch? Let me know in the comment section below. But speaking of classics coming back, I think that one of the best Monolith Soft games is also coming back and their involvement has been revealed here and that is Baten Kaitos 1 and 2 HD Remaster. The game is releasing this week, September 15th. They'll be out this Friday. I know I will be playing it and checking it out right here on Player Essence. So if you're interested in learning more about Baten Kaitos and watching gameplay and delving back into Monolith Soft's past with an incredible GameCube remaster, make sure you uh, hit that notification bell because I will be playing the game and of course talking about it more. Now over on Nintendo Everything, there was a massive interview with the new producer of Baten Kaitos. Now I didn't know about this guy beforehand, but he's talking recently. His name is Koji Nakajima, and he had a lot to say about the game. Now, they talked about New Game Minus instead of New Game Plus, kind of giving fans a different way to play the game, kind of like New Game Plus. I mean, it's in there, right, to where you can have all your stuff, but then you can also reduce stuff with New Game Minus, so you can have a little bit of a different challenge with the game. They talked about the quality of life improvements, which we did go over a bit, and there are so many different things that they improved upon and what they did but even being able to smooth out the performance and improve the game overall fix a few bugs here and there additional adjustments so all that is really good but one of the biggest things that they like is the fact that you can speed things up and that has been a problem i guess with some old school rpgs that the pace is just so slow but if you can speed things up a little bit games like bravely default have speed adjusters built into the battle system which has become the norm for a lot of turn-based rpgs in the modern day but obviously back then they didn't have that so i think that's pretty cool they also talked about not having the english vo which is a big blow for many fans out there some fans not even buying the game because of that their reasoning was kind of eh, i didn't really like it they said oh well we made some adjustments and uh for this remastered version and there'd be discrepancies between them but i still think even with that you should have it in there so that was unfortunate but then they did talk about nintendo originally publishing the title and how they needed to work with them in some type of way so how did nintendo help out here well let's talk about that so according to the producer he says that the original titles were released in the gamecube and the remastered title on the nintendo switch we had great support from nintendo throughout the project so nintendo was supporting them because he actually discussed how they had to go back and research everything about the game and collect what files that they had and material because there wasn't really much right there wasn't really a lot of modern to go off of because the games were never re-released in any type of way like on the Wii or the Wii U or anything like that so there was a lot of work to be done beforehand now this is the big thing here Monolith Soft how were they involved because remember this was back when Monolith Soft was not with Nintendo Nintendo had not purchased them and they were with Bandai Namco or Namco at the point so here's what he had to say the remaster is developed by a different studio so Monolith Soft was not involved in this project However, they supported us with information from the original game and gave us advice on the remaster and the tremendous support during the development of this game. So it's pretty cool to see that Monolith Soft, even still all these years removed, and we all know Monolith Soft is hard at work on their next major project for the Nintendo Switch 2. There's a lot of stuff that they're gonna be doing, so they probably didn't have the time to really get involved with this, and the game's already done. They just need to really give them that support, but it's good to see that Monolith Soft did that, that they did give them that support and say, hey, this is what you guys need to do. This is what we would do if we were working on it, so it can make a better game. So that's always awesome, you know, and it's great to see 
but they did talk about the future of the Baton Kaitos franchise and what's happening there. And here's what they had to say. Could there be a brand new game if this game does well? And they stated this. There are no plans for a sequel currently. Our focus right now is to make sure the great JRPG work created by great creators from our industry is well remastered, delivered to our players, and be enjoyed all over the world. So there you go. There's probably not going to be anything, even if this game does well, there probably isn't going to be anything else added to it. I don't think this game is going to be like, oh my gosh, a blockbuster type of hit, but I do think that it's going to end up a lot of like cult sneaky type of hit for fans out there because they are really good games and people are going to want to import that Asian version to have a physical monolith soft. I mean, it's just comes with the prestige of monolith soft but i think that with this type of release it's good because you are preserving the game people always talk about game preservation this is one way to get it done we want those rpgs from monolith soft we want those rpgs from the past we want xeno saga we want these games to be brought over to modern systems so they're not lost or stuck before on ps2 or the sixth generation or fifth generation or the ds or 3ds we want these games being brought over so if you're a fan of these classic rpgs like xeno saga or like baton kaitos or like soma bringer or like anything that has came out beforehand whenever they do releases like this definitely make sure that you look into getting it i know i am i'm gonna get it digitally nintendo's probably gonna give me a review code i'm gonna get it again physically i already have my play asia pre-order so that's what i like about this i think that it's an important game to support because we want to see more of monolith soft's older games come over we want to see more of these classic rpgs come over and this is a great game to support because it really you do get like your money's worth when it comes down to it these games are fantastic so what do you guys think about botan cactus 1 and 2 hd remaster and what they're doing with the game plan on picking it up or picking it up later down the line let me know in the comment section but speaking of some interesting games or interesting game more like it let's talk about gotham knights now this was a game that came out on the playstation 5 and xbox series i think last year and there was a lot of controversy surrounding this game when it comes to what this game is compared to what the batman series did before on the playstation 3 the xbox 360 the wii u the ps4 the xbox one and gotham knights came out to lackluster performance and reviews and many people felt that uh, this game is just going to die, you know, there's not really going to be much more for this game, especially since they canceled the PS4 and the Xbox One versions and said, hey, we need all the power for the PS5 and Xbox series, and then the game runs at 30 frames per second, and many feel that the game looks worse than Batman Arkham Knight on the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, which Batman Arkham Knight is coming out on the Nintendo Switch here pretty soon, along with the original two games. So it's interesting to see the dynamic here, but but apparently Gotham Knights has been rated for the Nintendo Switch by the ESRB. That is the rating board here in the US. So officially, somebody from Warner Bros. said, hey, we are rating this game, Gotham Knights, for the Nintendo Switch. So there is this game. This game is like real for the Switch. People are just saying, hmm. But what form will it take? Will it be a cloud game? Will it be a regular game? Now, the rating does suggest that we'll be coming to Nintendo's hybrid platform in the near future, which was originally released for the PS5, Xbox Series S, PC, via Steam and Epic Game Store back in October 2022. Looks like this could be part of a Nintendo Direct announcement. I mean, you kind of complete it with the rest of the games that are coming out in October. Now, the other games with Batman Arkham Knight, Batman Arkham Asylum, Batman Arkham City, those are all real, normal games. They're not cloud titles. And apparently, Batman Arkham Knight, it's not cloud, man. It is there on the Nintendo Switch. And many people feel that Batman Arkham Knight actually is graphically superior to Gotham Knights. So some people are wondering, well, wait a minute, how is it going to run on the Nintendo Switch? I mean, it might run terrible on the platform. There was some problems that it had on Xbox and PlayStation when it came out. But I mean, if they got Batman Arkham Knight running good on the Nintendo Switch or running good enough, I'm guessing they could get Gotham Knights running good enough. But we're going to have to wait and see on that one. I'm not really sure. I'm not a big fan of Gotham Knights. I don't think the game is that great. But I guess for some people that might want to play on the Switch, it could be there for you. But it might take cloud version or maybe it's actually a regular version of the game. Now, the last topic that we're going to discuss here for RPGs is the next Mass Effect. Effect. So apparently they are ditching the open world format that Mass Effect Andromeda had and going back to the classic 
format that we saw with Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3. I guess Mass Effect 1 definitely had more of like an open world format at times too. I'm a huge Mass Effect fan for those who don't know. So apparently Mass Effect developer Bioware is pulling back from Andromeda's open world approach and plans to streamline its world in Mass Effect 4. This comes from Windows Central Jazz Corden, who is a very good reporter, by the way. He actually got the Eurogamer Nintendo Switch report stuff. He actually talked about that before the reports came out from VGC and Euro gamer so he's heard rumors that bioware does plan to quote ditch the open world and go back to the franchise's classic format so Corden made the claim in the latest edition of his podcast the xbox 2 podcast with randall l thor fantastic podcast make sure you guys go check it out in a broader conversation about the pros of established studios sticking to the development blueprint that made their games so special versus the cons of taking risks and innovating only for it to instantly crash and burn so he also added this that quote I've heard that Mass Effect is ditching open world, Corden said, and going back to its classic format. I don't know if that's accurate 100%, but it's an industry rumor. So we'll just have to wait and see how all of this works out. But what are your thoughts on this, guys, when it comes to everything that we discussed with Chrono Trigger potentially coming back? Baten Kaitos, Gotham Knights, and more. Let me know in the comment section below. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you're someone new. Click that notification bell, and we will catch you for the next one. Peace out.